we're back. All right, and we're back. I thought I'd jive it up a little bit with, uh, we're back, making not so monotone. I definitely don't want to bore any of you. Places I want to visit, local or uh, haunted locations around the world, for that matter. Uh, have any of you ever heard of the suicide woods of Mount Fuji, Japan? Uh, Josh Gates and his team of Dest on Destination Truth did an investigation in the haunted woods of Mount Fuji, Japan. Uh, it's estimated that anywhere from 70 to 100 suicides per year take place there. Some bodies are never even discovered, for that matter. Uh, it's considered an honorable death code for that. Uh, the, the way they live by the code of the samurai. It's one of the only countries that an insurance policy, a life insurance policy, will still actually carry over even if the person commits suicide, so the family is taken care of because it's considered it an honorable death. Uh, when bodies are recovered, they are placed at the station in a room with two beds. One is for the body that's discovered, and the other is for a guard who has to sleep in the same room with the dead body for fear of the lonely corpse screaming throughout the night and waking the people near that village, near the towns that surround this this wooded area, this forest. Um, another area, another hot spot I'd like to th more thoroughly investigate instead of just do a standard walkthrough, which I've done in the past. Bobby Mackey's World of Music in Wilder, Kentucky. I would love to spend an extended period of time there and dedicate more hours and more investigated resources into this. Uh, st stories coming f out from the woodworks of this. Uh, stories of satanic ritualistic murder involving two men beheading a woman and throwing her head in a well that is now in the basement of what's now known as Bobby Mackey's because it, at first this was an old slaughterhouse where they would slaughter the animals for food uh, prepare the meat, pack the meat, and drain the blood out the back of the building through a draining stream which would lead out into none other than the drinking supply of the townspeople. And they were drinking bloody water, uh, unfortunately. Uh, there's also stories of a murderous love triangle that took place. Um, like I mentioned, former slaughterhouse, blood ran into the town's drinking water. I'd love to spend uh, an entire weekend at this location. Salem, Massachusetts is the third location I'd love to spend hours, if not a week there, uh, if not a month there. Need I say more about Salem, Massachusetts? The Salem uh, Witch Trials, of course, where more than 24 people throughout Salem and surrounding towns and villages were tortured and or killed for crimes of witchcraft, uh, whether or not they were truly witches, or if maybe one or two of them even practiced witchcraft, or if my, my uh, host, my guest from last week, stated um, there's a possible uh, vampire connection to the Salem witch trials where they were actually vampires, not witches, <clears throat> but a witch would be easier to brand at that time and easier to digest than a vampire would be. The Alamo would be the fourth location that I would love to spend uh, months researching and diving into. The final battle was a pivotal, uh, pivotal event in the Texas Revolution, of course. Uh, following a 13-day siege, Mexican troops under President General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana launched an assault on the Alamo mission near San Antonio, uh, modern-day San Antonio, Texas. Uh, all but two of the Texan defenders were killed. And you can all imagine the supernatural unrest that still resides there. Uh, I've heard stories coming from people who've toured the Alamo, who've gone through and seen reenactments, who've gone through and spent a few hours there just walking through and seeing the location for themselves. Uh, the battlefield of Gettysburg. That is another 
paranormal hotspot I am just dying to get into. Uh, between 46,000 and 51,000 soldiers from both armies uh, were casualties in this three-day battle. Uh, the November, that November, President Lincoln used the dedication ceremony for the Gettysburg National Cemetery to honor the fallen Union soldiers and uh, redefine the purpose of the war in his historic Gettysburg Address. There have been literally thousands of stories that have come out of the battlefield of Gettysburg. Paranormal encounters, uh, phantom whispers, phantom uh, gunshots, the smell of, of rot and blood, the sound of gunshots, the feeling of people being wounded themselves where they, they feel like they're getting shot or they're being touched, uh, people seeing reenactments that aren't really reenactments, it's just residual occurrences of the battlefield itself. And I guarantee freaking T that if you were to build a neighborhood on the field of Gettysburg, every single house would be haunted. Not because of what took place in the house, but because of what took place on the land. And every single house would be touched supernaturally by what occurred there so many years ago. The Waverly Hill Sanitarium. Some urban legends claim that 63,000 deaths occurred at the sanitarium. According to Assistant Medical Director Dr. J. Frank W. Stewart, the highest number of deaths in a single year at the Waverly Hills Sanitarium was 152. Stewart wrote that the worst time for deaths was at the end of the Second World War, when troops were returning from overseas with a very advanced tuberculosis cases. <clears throat> Some independent researchers suggest that since 162 people died at Waverly Hill Sanitarium in 1945, the highest total number of deaths possible over 50 years was approximately 8,212. Let's talk about the death shuttles. According to one urban legend, the tunnel was a body chute where dead patients were tossed and a body thrown in uh, would make it to the bottom by simple gravity. But actually, the dead patients were strapped on a gurney and by a rope and pulley system, the gurneys were rolled to the bottom and transferred to a hearse. This was done to keep the morale high and the remaining patients were still deathly ill. And there are so many stories coming out of the Waverly Hill Sanitarium. So many investigations have taken place there between my guys with taps and ghost hunters, uh, <clears throat> my guys with uh, ghost uh, adventures, Zach and his bunch. I, I believe that uh, Paranormal State tackled it, and I know that Scariest Places on Earth did a documentary series there where they followed it and, uh, and did several... Uh, several pieces of work there as well. So, some pretty gritty, scary uh, things have taken place there, just along with all of those other locations I've mentioned that I really want to spend a lot of time investigating in the near future. Uh, I'm going to touch uh, more on that. Uh, one place in particular would be the Mansfield Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, I will let my upcoming guest, Shannon, the historian tell you about this hotspot after we return from our next commercial break. She is currently the curator and the educator that is responsible for keeping the interest in the Mansfield Reformatory alive. She's dedicated a lot of time and effort there and she is my go-to gal when it comes to all there is to know about the Mansfield Reformatory. When we return from our break, I will be sure to let her clue you in on that. Just bear with me. We are going to cut to commercial now. Alright, you're on. Yeah, just... Yeah, you can still be on the chat. Definitely. 
In fact, you can uh, you can feed questions to me if any questions come in. I'd love that. Because <laughs> so far, no one's questioned. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah? Are you liking it so far? Do you like my, my whole format? I'm not dull. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm a little congested. I, I didn't know if I sound funny. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I have better what? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, you're coming in really well. I hear you perfectly. <laughs> uh, Soup Media Network. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. All right, we're doing fine. Doing fine. How's everyone doing still? Are you still with me? I've got some feedback for some reason. I'm not sure why, but we'll just go with it. Right now, I've got Shannon Lusk on the air with me, or Shannon Tesso, Shannon Sells. What do you prefer to be called tonight, dear? I, I noticed that's what you have it listed as too with the uh, the historian site, so I figured we'd keep it like that because I I assumed that since you uh, set it up like that, you were probably wanting to keep the professionalism with Lusk, and all your friends like myself know you as Shannon Sell, Shannon Tesso. Because when I saw Lusk, I'm like, what is that? I didn't know if it was witness protection or something. <laughs> 